Hello, my name is Terry Rowe. I'm a councilman here in Chandler, and welcome to Chandler in Focus. And uh, our guest today is former Chandler Mayor Jerry Brooks. Welcome, Jerry. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Yeah. And I want to thank you for the good job you're doing on the council, too. I appreciate that. Well, those are generous words. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so we're at the beginning of a new year, and um, uh, you were the mayor here in Chandler in the past, and so it, with a new year, it's always good sometimes to sit and uh, take a little bit of time to reflect. And so... Uh, so for those that don't know some of the history of Chandler, we just think this is a great opportunity for us to uh, have one of those discussions that kind of like where you and I sit at brunchies and talk about uh, some of the old times. Good idea. So that's what I think we'll do. And uh, so first of all, give us a little background. How did, uh, a little bit about how you... Uh, well, uh, I, I grew up in, uh, in Scottsdale in East Phoenix and I and went in the service in, uh, in the Marine Corps in 1947 and uh, subsequently got commissioned the Air Force and retired from the Air Force in 1977. And when I came back to the valley, I looked around uh, the valley and Chandler looked more like the valley that I left uh, in uh, the early days than anything else. So I settled in Chandler and I'm glad of it. <laughs> You're glad, of, okay. And so you, uh, so you were in the Air Force and, uh, and you left in 1977. True. Yeah. Retired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, um, uh, family history. You're uh, you're living here today, of course. You're still a, a yeah. resident of Chandler, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, well, my grandparents came out to the valley uh, in nineteen once at nineteen eighteen, and then it was at nineteen twenty, and they settled in old downtown. It's now downtown Scottsdale, and they were hay farmers there, and uh, my. Uh, Father and mother uh, met because they were lived on adjacent farms, and uh, they got married. and And I'm the product of that marriage. <laughs> right, right here in Arizona. Yeah, right here, here in Arizona. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Well, you served as our mayor here in Chandler. Uh, well, in, first of all, you served uh, as a council member, and and when was that? Uh, Eighty two to eighty four. I served on the council. Okay. And then I resigned and ran for mayor in, in uh, eighty four. Okay, and then uh, so you served two terms uh, as, mayor? as mayor. As mayor, yeah. and yeah, so limitation uh, terms and as two terms. Yeah. Yes, two two-year terms, and you uh, served during that time. And um, that's right. And then uh, so, um, how does somebody decide? I know I certainly have had different reasons for running uh, over the years, but how did you decide to well, get involved in uh, politics or it local was government? A very dynamic seen in the way in the development and as cities were growing in the East Valley at that time. And uh, I was uh, anxious to see Chandler grow uh, into the, the south of South Mountain, what's the Ahwatukee Foothills area now. And I talked to the city councilman about uh, uh, strip annexing an area over there so that protect us for, for us. And, uh, but. Uh, there wasn't much interest, and so I decided, well, I'll run for the city council. And uh, by the time I got on the city council, they outlawed strip annexations, and uh, we lost, uh, uh, or I didn't get an opportunity to pursue that uh, annexation of that area over there, which uh, I think would have been very beneficial to Chandler. But that's the way things go. It oh, was a okay. very dynamic time. Okay, so what you're saying is that Ahwatukee could have been you know, could have well, been Chandler. Could have been Chandler. That was my that was my aim and my goal, and my uh, dream for Chandler. Right. That's a beautiful area over there. Well, we know you love Chandler, and uh, so that was uh, that was a project. And so you kind of threw your hat in the ring and uh, got into it. And then, uh, and then being a council person alone or councilman alone was uh, uh, wasn't quite enough. You wanted to <laughs> wanted to run for mayor, and so you did that. And then, That's uh, true. but let's talk a little bit about. Um, uh, what Chandler was like back in the, the middle uh, Well, the middle population age. in 1980, I remember very specifically, was uh, uh, 20,855. And uh, the city limits were very constricted to what they are now. Uh, we were just confined to the downtown area, basically. Um, we, we had a lot of growing to do. I could see that uh, based on my experience of watching... Uh, how Phoenix and Scottsdale had grown over the years, and uh, so I just I just wanted to 
get in and be a, be a player and uh, make, make a difference. From that point forward, Chandler's been my passion uh, ever since. Wow, that's terrific. But uh, okay, so um, large, 20,000 people, clearly, uh, you know, 65 square miles today. <laughs> uh, so that's a, that's a very small population right. for that big of a city. And uh, so what, uh, what was the, what was the real estate like? Was it largely a... a oh, it was uh, predominantly farming. Everything was farming. But by the way, well, the four years that I was mayor, the population uh, increased 235%. Uh, the growth was just phenomenal. Our council meetings went till, well, I can remember one of them went till two o'clock in the morning considering land use issues and uh, zoning applications and development uh, projects that came before the council. It was a very, very busy time. And uh, we, uh, we so somehow sorted through it. We didn't have much of a tax base, but uh, we found ways to, to get things done. So even when things were going very well, there was so much business that sometimes you were here quite late. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with, yeah. with the council meetings, absolutely. Yeah. It was routine to start at 7 o'clock and not get out till after 10 or 11, yeah. uh, routinely. Yeah. Long hours, long yeah. hours. Some pages of agenda items. And yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, a lot of agriculture, a lot of irrigation, a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of dirt roads, I would imagine. A lot of roads were built while you were mayor. Oh, yes, they were. Yeah. We we didn't have a we didn't have a tax base. We didn't have much money, so we uh, developed uh, most of the roads. That is uh, Chandler Boulevard from um, Arizona Avenue to the freeway, and Ray Road uh, from Arizona Avenue to the freeway, and uh, put an exchange in. There wasn't even an exchange at uh, Ray Road and the freeway at the time. Interchange uh, there, so we. Uh, had to find a way to get all that done. We used the uh, improvement district uh, pro process where you assess the uh, property owners along the uh, route of the improvement. And uh, we improved uh, those roads and all the north-south roads out in West Chandler. It was, every road in town was torn up at one time or another. <laughs> So you talked about uh, uh, Ray Road and Chandler, uh, Chandler Boulevard being, uh, which was Williams Field Road then, I guess. True. Because it went out to Williams Air Force Base, which was, uh, you know, uh, quite a ways east out on Power Road. Yep. And, uh, but a lot of those roads uh, were improved. And when you say uh, to the freeway, you meant to the 10, the Interstate 10. I-10, yes. Because clearly yes. there was no... From Arizona Avenue to I-10. Yeah, there was no 101 at the time. And uh, so, True. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. what, what about the 101? What was the, well, what was the planning on that? And uh, you know, We were being strangled uh, traffic-wise in the whole metropolitan area. So uh, MAG, of which I was uh, vice chairman of for a while, uh, put together a freeway plan which uh, includes what we now have is Loop 101 and Loop 102. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, they didn't uh, include the section from uh, Superstition Freeway down to uh, 202 and Chandler as a freeway. They were gonna build it as a um, uh, boulevard or something with stop lights at every mile intersection. And okay. okay, so now hang on. So the 101 that we enjoy today <laughs> was uh, certainly it didn't exist uh, coming from uh, from Mesa but it True. Uh, but it uh, it was just going to be a stop and go thing uh, stop signs every True. mile or something like that and True and I could I could uh, envision the growth of Chandler uh, warranting that as a freeway uh, it was it was obvious to me so I I fought vigorously uh, with the uh, mag executive council and uh, and the proposition, proposition, the people that were putting the proposition together to fund the freeways and said, uh, basically, if they didn't include that as a freeway, that uh, I couldn't be, I couldn't support it. And uh, so they eventually did a, a um, remodeling of the traffic at uh, ADOT and uh, MAG and uh, came back and said, uh, yeah, I guess you're, I guess you're right. It, probably should be so we'll include that as a freeway okay so and anybody that drives it today 
car even 10 years ago knows it needed to be a freeway. Yeah, so when you say MAG, that's the uh, Maricopa Associ Association of Governments. Maricopa. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. and uh, that's uh, and that's something that we're still involved in. Uh, sure. the, the Chandler is still a big part of today, and uh, mm -hmm. so so you were in leadership at that time uh, of, that, of that group, and, mm -hmm. and everybody I think knows that ADOT is an Arizona Department of oh. Transportation. And uh, I but, should. Uh, I'm so used to using those acronyms yeah. that I just throw them out there. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you and I certainly know, but uh, yeah. it's nice to share. So, sure. uh, so so we have a 101, and that led. Uh, you know, clearly it leads uh, south to uh, what is now the Chandler Fashion Center, right? That's right. And then uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, our original master plan for this land use plan that we put together called for a free for a mall at the intersection of uh, Ray Road and Price Road. But once we got a uh, freeway plan put in place, we could see that it should be down at the intersections of 101 and 202. So we modified that and um, put the, uh, the mall site down there. And uh, of course, Westcourt at the time was the developer and uh, they came in and thought that was a great idea and um, took a few years, but um, they, uh, they agreed to site it at that uh, location. And I am very happy for Chandler we did that because that, that's a, uh, Big benefit to Chandler now. Yeah, well, I agree because very quickly you can get on the 101 and you can find yourself uh, whether you're going to Phoenix or you're going to go off to the Chandler Fashion Center and uh, and and I know that there are new malls cropping up around the state, but uh, I'm I'm very proud of our Chandler Fashion Center. It's got a mm -hmm. it, it, it's the place to go when the weather is hot. I'll tell you that. That's right, and note that it's named the Chandler Fashion Center, yeah, which, yeah. I, which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So also in that area, if we go, uh, if we look further south, is the Price Corridor. So uh, True. What, was there any any thoughts about that at the time? I mean, uh, well, we had already, we were already in the process of uh, uh, annexing the area down to um, Sun Lakes borders, and uh, when we did that, we um, wanted to do the master community, master plan community of Ocotilla, and we wanted a good connection with that. But we wanted an industrial corridor there, and we didn't want to use the Price Road alignment because we couldn't get uh, shared ex expense of building it from the uh, Indian community. So we moved it a quarter mile from there, and therefore we built it with an uh, improvement district where we could assess properties on each side. And that allowed us to put the Price Road corridor in with the uh, industrial uh, uh, zoning that uh, that you see now, which has turned out to be one of the premier uh, sites in the state, I think. Yeah. It's very desirable. Yeah, a lot of communities are envious of, uh, of the price corridor. And uh, so, True. Uh, and I imagine that while you were mayor or even on council, there was there were attempts to use some of that land for other than uh, <laughs> other than what you had tried to uh, say, look, this is it, this is what we're gonna do with it, right? That's gone on through the years. The home builders would love to have that uh, access to that uh, land down there, but I think if you're gonna build a, uh, the, fortunately the councils have stuck together with a master plan, understanding that you have to have a balanced uh, uh, city, you have to have enough revenue from uh, industrial and uh, and uh, so forth to uh, support the city. So uh, they've stuck to their guns and I'm very proud of them for doing that. Uh, it's still, like you said, uh, very, um, a very valuable asset to the city. Yeah, and as uh, available land becomes less available, uh, it, uh, it, it, it we're, we're trying to fill in some of those spaces. And so right. it's challenging, right? Well, let them fill in any place but on that price corridor right. because the, the, the industries will come. You have to be patient. You have to, to uh, wait for it, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's there. Chandler has a reputation around the world now with Intel down at the end of the, the price road corridor and the other major uh, developers along there uh, They'll, they'll be bringing them in, so I hope you and the 
rest of the future councils will stick to your guns and protect that for <laughs> industrial development. It's in the city's best interest. Yeah, well, I hope so too. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we have, and to segue here, uh, so we had the price quarter. We went from the, we went from the 101. We went to the fashion center, the Chandler Fashion Center. We went to the price corridor, and uh, so now let's shoot out east a little bit, and that's where mm. our uh, Chandler mm -hmm. Airport is. So that's right. What was that like, uh, and what is it? What? How do you compare it to today? Well, when I was on the city council, it was a very little place. Uh, pr uh, after uh, when I, either when I was on the council or after I was mayor, we closed. Uh, um, Cooper Road there and extended the runways and made a made a safer airport out of it. And uh, then we, while I was mayor, we did a, a, a nine square mile airport master plan area master plan out there, wherein we tried to uh, keep uh, residential de development from encroaching on uh, the airport or the airport encroaching on them. However you want to look at it, but we. We have a lot of industrial and commercial zone land around the uh, runway and the airport out there in that nine square mile area. And there were some tax incentives to people to uh, develop out there, by the way, some uh, offset employ and employment costs if people developed in the, in the airport area. I don't know, I'm not sure if that still exists, but uh, I suspect it does. Um, the, uh, the area's been encroached on a little too much to my satisfaction. Their homes closer than uh, than I'd like to have seen. But of course, uh, when I was looking at it, it was uh, all agriculture out there, and uh, uh, I just was trying to protect the uh, the uh, airport and have uh, sensible development where you didn't have uh, air aircraft noise bothering. Uh, uh, residential developments. Yeah, so I think sensible development is a good way to put that. It's uh, yeah. you know, a kind of uh, coexist there and still have good, in, uh, I mean, that's a good place for more industrial development. And uh, and if our airport, uh, uh, if, if we can make it work and make sure everybody works together, we have some, uh, we, sure have, do. we can be good neighbors, right? And Terry, we've got uh, some uh, major things going on out there now. There's a lot of commercial development going on out there. Million square feet or so are under development out there now. So big projects, big projects. Big projects. Yeah. All right, so we are racing ahead because we are. Uh, this know, is Chandler. I mean, we're <laughs> when we're at brunchies, we can sit there all day, but uh, we we want to definitely no. share. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, it's interesting. Um, the northwest border of Chandler <laughs> seems to be a little bit puzzle-like. It's a little yeah. bit jagged. Uh, and can you comment on well, how did, how how is that? It's a little before my time, actually, in 76, uh, the city did a uh, kind of secret uh, annexation attempt of the area uh, south of, uh, of Elliott Road uh, uh, from Price to the freeway, to I-10 freeway. And uh, they passed a, a uh, annexation resolution. And uh, when Tempe heard about it, they were beside themselves. They, <laughs> they didn't want to lose that land. And so they looked very closely at the uh, annexation application or uh, legal description. And there was a minor error in the legal description. The legal description said that Chandler would annex an area uh, bounded by Price Road to Elliott Road, thence east, it said, to the freeway, which was an error. It should have said west. Mm. So it went to court and the judges finally said, uh, uh, you two cities fight it out. We're not gonna rule in favor of one or the other. So uh, Tempe and Chandler uh, uh, sat down and worked out a very, very irregular boundary out, out there as you, uh, as you mentioned. And so today we're still good neighbors, but we have a little bit of a, like you said, irregular oh, border. So that happened a, uh, between many cities in right. the valley, but uh, right. we avoided that. And with Gilbert, by uh, while I was mayor, we did an intergovernmental agreement with uh, Gilbert to establish the uh, eastern boundary of uh, the city of Chandler and Gilbert. We got we got agreement before development came, so we didn't have any annexation fights out there, but. Uh, no. They were very common in, when I was uh, in office. 
Tempe, I mean, uh, Peoria and Phoenix and Glendale and Peoria and all of them were at yeah. Quarla. Okay, so let's, let's move forward to um, a project that you're most proud of. And I'll let you tell us what that is. That's... Well, I'm most proud of the Forming Arts Center, of all the things that I participated in. And uh, I'm most proud of it because it's a joint venture between the city of Chandler and the Chandler Unified School District, which by the way, I'm extremely proud of. It's the number one school district in the state. And uh, we uh, share the facility uh, and we shared the cost of construction. Uh, Chandler had to buy some land along uh, Arizona Avenue, it's our contribution. And we used some of the Chandler School District land behind that. And then we jointly uh, funded the nine and a half million dollars approximately that was spent to build that facility. Wow. And uh, so the city of Chandler got that for four and a half, less than five million dollars where uh, other cities you see you're hearing about are spending 90 and $100,000 for performing arts centers. And I think, uh, I think that facility is serving the city very, very well. There's a lot of youth activity there. I went to the, um, the uh, Chandler School District's uh, winter choral performance over there the other night, and it was absolutely filled with parents and there were more than 100 students on the stage in, a, in an auditorium that no other school in the state has access to. And it made me so proud, I nearly popped my buttons, I'll tell you. <laughs> it was great, Terry. Well, the, uh, so the Chandler Center for the Arts, what a, what a great facility. And uh, yeah, so is. you played a role in the, and who was, with the, who was the superintendent? Or that oh, you worked with? I, I, I see, Ted Perry was the, uh, school superintendent, and uh, I have to give him an awful lot of credit. I, I, I came up with the idea of the joint venture, and I went over and met with uh, the superintendent, Ted Perry, ahead of time, and just to see how he'd feel about it, and he thought it was a good idea. So there were a couple of school board members that had run for school board and said that uh, one of their issues was to build a new auditorium for the uh, school, the high school. So Ted worked, it, worked with me and uh, we took it to the school board. They bought into the concept. My council bought into it and, uh, and it's, a, uh, it's a great example of what can be done in the way of uh, joint ventures between uh, yeah, different governmental agencies, I yeah. think. Yeah, and, that, and you know what, Chandler's uh, uh, really uh, starting to do more and more of that. Have uh, partnerships with, uh, I'm glad with Gilbert and other communities, yeah. and uh, oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. So, a wastewater uh, place, wastewater, a, yeah. a new jail mm -hmm. facility, and that sort of thing, and yeah. so, so good things are happening. Okay, so we're running out of time a little bit, but uh, um, a couple of questions. Um, I don't know if you, you know, I mean, restaurants come and go, but what was the best restaurant in uh, 1985 in downtown Chandler? Was that uh, well, you have to, if you have to, if you, if you like Mexican food, no, well, whether you like it or not, it had to be Serrano's right. uh, in downtown Chandler. Sure. The uh, classiest first uh, upscale restaurant that we had in the city was a place called Chops. It uh, has changed names several times. It was over on Alma School Road, but uh, you've got to give the Serrano family a lot of credit for the work they've done and, uh, in uh, helping the development of downtown as well as uh, running two very good businesses downtown. Uh, that is uh, Brunchies and, uh, and the uh, Serrano restaurant. That's yeah. wonderful. So an awful lot happened and, <laughs> and has happened uh, yes, since has. you were mayor. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, water, like you say, water treatment facilities and uh, uh, we, have a, uh, uh, we, we have great roads, we have good good traffic systems, we have a, a nice police facility and fire facility, we have, we, we're just very fortunate. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and to your credit, you know, uh, oh, and, and you. councils along the way, and, sure. and city managers and city staff and, and, and the citizens that support those efforts, uh, you know, we have a great community today. Is that, is that, could, is that I, fair to say? I couldn't have gotten any of those things done without uh, uh, the ex excellent staff that we had at the time. And we still have an excellent staff, I'm sure. But uh, 
Don Brown was the city manager and uh, they, uh, they just made things happen. We, uh, the council came up with uh, ideas and uh, they found ways to get them done. And uh, that's the uh, essence of Chandler. It's gone on ever since I left office. I know they just, uh, it's a can-do city. Yeah. And I'm so proud of it, I can't, uh, yeah. I can't tell you how much. Well, it shows, it shows. Okay, <laughs> so uh, there is a rumor there is a rumor that you had a license plate that was a personalized license plate. <laughs> uh, what what was the, you know, what, what did it say? Well, right when I became mayor, I got a personalized plate that said C-H-N-D-L-R. And I had, the, I had that on one of my cars and I had another one, C-H-N-D-L-R, on the other car. And yeah, uh, yeah. I was happy to go to MAG meetings, uh, Miracle Association of Government meetings and uh, transportation uh uh, systems meetings, uh, all those joint meetings with other cities and uh, drive into the parking lot with my Chandler license plate. <laughs> yeah. Well, your pride does show. It does show. And Thank you. So uh, I think um, I think the people of Chandler, whether, you know, and, and I think we realize it, have a lot to be proud of, uh, you know, and, yeah, uh, and, sure do. and it's a great community. And, uh, and as long as we work together, it can continue to be that way. And so... I want to, uh, uh, there's no bill to pick up for breakfast or lunch today, so, um, but, I, but, I, but, but we'll do that again. And, Let's uh, have lunch. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but I want to personally thank you for uh, coming in and sharing uh, some of, uh, some thoughts on what uh, Chandler was and, uh, and, and, and what you think of it today. And uh, so thank you so much. And, uh, and, and folks, um, uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm Terry Ch Terry Rowe, and I'm a Chandler City Councilman, and this is uh, Chandler in Focus. Thank you so much.